mid-range grunt, it's amazing. Oh, look, it's a Saab, that's right, a Saab. If you don't know what a Saab looks like, well, it looks like that, because that's a Saab. This one is a 9.3, no, it's a 9.5. That's 9-5, or some people just call it 9.5. I'm not sure which is the correct way to do it, and it's not really that relevant. It's a saloon car, but it looks almost a bit like a hatch. Look. Ugh. What a heavy boot. What an unusual hinge. Look at that. That's really rather complicated and exciting. Normally your boot would open up like that, but this one goes back so it's almost having a hug with the rear screen. Before we go any further, I'm going to tell you something. I really like the Saab 95. Just like that one there. I used to have one, you know. Do you want to know why I like this car? I like Saab. I'm going to tell you anyway, so hopefully the answer is yes. I like them because they're a bit quirky. They're a bit different. They may be based loosely on a Vauxhall Vectra, but they're nothing like a Vectra. They don't look like a Vectra. I don't think they drive like a Vectra. And I forgot what I was going to say next. Saab always made a sensible car. A bit like, you know, a Volkswagen or an Audi. But the difference is, an Audi or a Volkswagen they're a bit like finding information by reading a Wikipedia article, whereas a Saab is a bit more like reading a book by Professor Robert Winston. The design, of course, is subtle. It has these lovely handles. It has a rather nice swage line. It has a clamshell bonnet. The rear quarter is distinctively Saab, and every Saab, no matter which one, looks a bit like a shoe. When they did the estate version of this car, they kept the back doors the same. Obviously, they thought, these are good enough. We don't want to make them any worse. That could possibly suggest that these are the best doors we could possibly have. So if we change the design, they're not going to be as good. So we'll keep the ones that we have. But it could be a matter of not spending too much money. It's this wraparound face that makes it look like a shoe and the clamshell bonnet and the back of it. I mean, really, to me, it's blindingly obvious that's what it looks like. But I would be exceedingly surprised if the designers had that in mind. Headlamp washers, 17-inch alloys, and green paint. That tells you something. It tells you it's going to be uh, sporty. Underneath the bonnet, we have a petrol engine, not a diesel. That's a good thing. It's a 2.3-litre straight four with a huge throttle body and down here a turbo big battery pipes everywhere this car may just mean the business it's the aero hot edition hot yeah that's an acronym for higher output turbo or is it a helicopter over to bent hamster outruns tortoise Hockey or tennis? No, it's none of those. I am very much looking forward to having a go in this car. Before I properly explore the inside, let's do the door shut sounds. This is the important one, the drivers. That's okay. What about the passenger? That sounds better. I prefer the passenger to the front. Inside the Saab 95 is all rather busy actually there's an awful lot of buttons everywhere we have four electric windows with good switches we have a a gear knob that's in reverse because there's no key in the ignition and then we have a whole bank of buttons all doing different jobs we have one of the coolest air vent displays going and of course this car is known for its rather excellent cup holder and as you'd expect, that still works. No other dashboard looks like this. It's, it is a rather unique design. I like it. I like it a lot. And then we have these rather, rather elegant, yet simple instrument uh, thingies there. There's nothing really silly or complicated going on. Does that work? Yes, it does. What do these buttons feel like? They feel as you'd expect. So sturdy, nice and good. Now we need to do this, the old proper dashboard test, and that is excellent. What good, good material that is. Good, good, good. It's all good, I like it. Good sturdy door. Uh, now that's a bit unusual. I don't know whether there's ever a case 
to have your fuel filler and your boot release on the side of the door there when it's so close to parts of your body that could actually knock it and uh, see you driving down the motorway with your boot open. But then this is a Saab and I would imagine that they have thought these things through properly. Maybe it's down to the kind of person that drives a Saab in the first place. If those buttons were on a Nissan, they'd be going around all the time with the boot open. Oh, rear leg room. Actually, it's not bad. Yeah, it's a big car actually. It's a big car with plenty of room inside and I might just bang on about how much I like it even further, but might be better just to take it for a drive instead. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Look at this, ashtrays in the rear. Mm, what does that tell you? It tells you that intelligent Swedish people smoke cigars in the back of their cars, even if they're only five years old. Key in the ignition, unlock, then it goes out of gear. A nice safety device, then switch on. Oh yes, of course, we have the old double sun visor as well. I forgot about that. Now this isn't uh, some sort of garage queen. This is a car in daily use. And at 24 years old with 193,000 miles, it's pretty good actually. It's quite impressive that um, it should be in this kind of condition as a daily car. So the steering, gearbox, everything all feels pretty good actually. Saab made some fast cars. I mean, the Aero is actually the fast version of the 95, but as the years went by, they made even faster versions of it. Now this one should be stock at 230 brake horsepower. And although it's a big car, that's quite a lot of power for the time. But how much of that power has it still got? With that kind of mileage, you might just assume it's not got much of it left. In a moment, I am going to put my foot down ever so slightly to see what this power is like in this car. But I've just got to say that I'm actually quite content just driving it normally. So it wouldn't even need a whole load of power for it to appeal to me. There, there we go. Third gear. Fiesta's going the way. Now this chap here, he did kind of do a, it was a slightly bit of careless driving as he pulled onto the roundabout. And now he's in my way. I want to make some progress. I want to see what the Saab is like when you put your foot down. I bet he's got his foot down properly now. Whoa, that is good. Oh. <laughs> I was expecting this to be quick, but it's a cock. Mikey that went. That really tears off. Wow. It's that mid-range grunt, it's amazing. Really amazing. I really want to do that again, but when am I gonna get a chance to do that before I run out of road? It was this car that apparently its mid-range punch is better than the Porsche 911 Turbo at the time. That is spectacular. Let's do that again. Nobody in front of me this time. Go. Oh. Huh. Wow. It's simply got a bit too much power to get down, I think. Uh, I'm going to say something a bit surprising here, but this um, this feels like this feels like the new quickest car I've ever been in, and at 230 brake horsepower, I'm not really sure how that's possible. I'm not. I can't really. I can't really use the power. Uh, as it's a big car, it's, it's, there's not really what you would call a, a sports car. I don't have sports car handling. I mean, it's, it's good enough, but it doesn't have that kind of relentless grip that you might get from something else. 
but that's seriously quick though. One criticism I suppose would be the the switch gear, the stalks are a bit um, cheap feeling, but everything else is really good. You know, the, the quality of this car, as you would imagine, is what you'd imagine. I've just got to do another takeoff down here because it's, it's quite uh, addictive. The only thing is, unless you get the wheel straight first. <laughs> this, that's brilliant. That, that's a flying machine. And the Saab is not a car that you drive irresponsibly. Sure, put your foot down a little bit, enjoy yourself, but don't act like a clot. What about the Vauxhall connection? Because this is loosely based on the Vectra B, but it doesn't feel anything like a Vectra B. It feels nothing like a Vectra B. And I know because I've driven a Vectra B and it's nothing like this. For one thing, obviously, the quality of the materials everywhere are nothing like the same. Did they do some modifications to the chassis as well? Whenever I've driven a Vectra B, it's, it's not a particularly pleasant experience. It doesn't feel like it's got a decent chassis. This is a bit stiffer. Again, it's not, it's not made for properly flinging around bends anywhere, like uh, a ZS might be, or even a Focus, but it's good enough. It's a lot better than a Vauxhall and a lot quicker. This honestly has been one of those test drives that I was very much looking forward to and I'm not in the slightest bit disappointed. It's as good as I was hoping and quicker than I was expecting. I've not looked into this but apparently these Saabs are still going for very reasonable prices. They're very very affordable. Unlike the German equivalents which I'm less tempted by anyway. Now, a while back, I was talking about wanting a Volvo, a V70. But the Saab 95 was another consideration for a big estate car. And you know what? I think um, I'm struggling not to start thinking about going and looking for one. This car, this engine, this estate, this color, brilliant. Yeah, if I could have an estate version of the Aero, I would be more than happy with that. This is the kind of car I could live with. The kind of car I would use every day and enjoy every day. I know I wouldn't get bored with it because I didn't get bored of the old one I used to have. And that didn't have a really exciting engine. It just had a diesel. So, in conclusion, I'm sold. I now want one of these. But I can't have one. Oh, and also, it's got proper carpet. Thank you, 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 thank you for watching this video.